What is going on guys, DBG here, and in this video we are going to be doing our final of the tier lists in NBA 2K20 My Team for the month of December. So, pretty much we've done point guard, two guard, small forward, power forward, and now we are doing center. And previously, I had actually said the power forward is weakest position by a mile, but just looking at these cards, the center position is not that much better. Because at the start of the year, we got a bunch of great centers. And recently, we've kind of struggled to get any great centers of note, which is a little bit of a problem, while we've gotten a few really good power forwards over the last couple of weeks. Still, though, I would say the power forward is weak position, but center position is kind of, it's getting close. It is getting close. And if a couple more good power forwards come out, center position might be overtaken as the, well, it might be overtaken and become the worst position, especially because we've been getting a lot of good two guys as well. But if you guys like this content, subscribe. We're trying to hit 135,000 subscribers by the end of the year. And the YouTube purge, which took 1,000 subscribers off me yesterday, is making that a little bit tough. But um, yeah, also, we're trying to hit 100 videos in December. And if you guys could leave a like, that'd be insane. If you get 250 likes, that'd be unreal. But anyway, now let's get on to the tier list. So at the um, first, we have Anthony Davis. And Anthony Davis is a guy that I really do like. Anthony Davis got a good jump shot. He's got quick draw, which gives him a good release. He's also got decent speed. He can defend on the perimeter quite well. He's a really good defender. Good player in the post. I'm going to put him all the way up in S tier. I think he's, I've used him a good few times. I think he's really good. Only problem is he's undersized at six foot ten, but again, blocks seems to block a ton of shots. Doesn't get killed for rebounds like someone like a Blake Griffin or an Amare does at the same height. So. I don't know why that is, but again, he does play well, so I can't, I'm not going to put him lower than that. Willis Reed is a card that I really don't like. We're going to put him in C tier. He's actually not a bad mid-range shooter. He's not a bad mid-range shooter at all. He'll leave him open, he'll hit shots. Problem is that he's 6'9", so he is a little bit smaller than AD, and he's also not quite as fast, but not quite as good on defense as Anthony Davis. Then we got George Mikan. George Mikan, an elite shooter. He's again, he's small, he's only 6'10", but... The difference between him and Anthony Davis is, even though Mikan's probably as good, if not better, shooter, is he's just slow. He's slow. So, he's basically a much worse Anthony Davis on defense, similar on offense, and he's quite slow. The start of the year, Mikan was elite, but as the year's gone on, there's just more and more guys to outclass him. Next, we've got another player who has fallen from grace since NBA 2K19. Heck, he's fallen from grace since NBA 2K18 because Dave Cowan's that 98 overall in NBA 2K18, that was a beast. The card in 2K19 was even more of a beast with base 11 and the ability to speed boost at the center position. However, however, Dave Cowan sucks. D tier. This card is straight up awful. A 6 foot 9 center who can't really shoot, can't really go to the basket well, can't really rebound well, can't really defend, can't do anything. He had 91 offense and defensive overall, and he's a 96. Some of the worst stats as well for a center. Next, we have got Nikola Jokic. Jokic, offensively, S or A tier. Defensively, below D tier. I'm going to put him B tier. He is one of the worst defensive centers in the game. Although he is a really good offensive center, so I can't justify putting him low. Because again, offense is a huge thing. Shoots the lights out. Like, absolutely shoots the lights out. Release is money with quick draw. He's got a great inside game, passes the ball really well, is quite fast for a center. But again, so bad on defense that I can't justify putting him any higher in B tier. He is literally a hologram. Um, Nate Thurmond is going into B tier as well. An inability to shoot the ball is a bit of a is a big problem. Rebounding, he's a beast, but to be fair, all these guys can rebound. Um, defensively, he's decent. And Andre Drummond is the exact same. But Andre Drummond is slightly worse than Nate Thurmond. Drummond has got an all right post game, can play bully ball a little bit in the post, rebounds quite well. Thing is, Drummond's not even fast. Drummond's slow. Like, this card is weak. Like, I get it, he's a free card, and a lot of people that grind it for him, he's not the worst guy in the world, but I just don't think he's good at all. Good in the slightest. Next, we've got Tim Duncan. So, Tim Duncan, all the way up in S tier. No question about that. You could argue he's the best center in the game. So Tim Duncan can shoot the three ball. He's got quick draw. He can shoot the mid really well. He's also a fantastic defender. He can guard people on the perimeter. He can guard people on the post. He can do pretty much everything you want from a big man in this game. Post game is elite. One of the best offensive and defensive centers. 
And there's a reason why he's like 500k. There's also a reason why anyone who has him pretty much uses him in their teams. Next, we got Bill Waltz or Will Chamberlain, who I'm going to put into A tier. Will Chamberlain would be one of the better cards in A tier. A freakishly fast center. His speed is like 85, but it feels like it's 99. He's 7 foot 1, block shots, rebounds really well. Again, the problem is that the guys have an S tier, can do everything Wilt can do, but they can shoot. Wilt can't shoot. Which, and if you can't shoot, you're not going to be an S tier. But a really good center, so I'm going to put him in A tier. Uh, Bill Walton is here, I think. Bill Walton is going into B tier. Decent center. Just overall solid. Rebounds well enough. One of the weaker pink diamond centers in the game, but he's just he's solid. He's solid. The Kevin Matumbo, 7'2. He's got good height. I'm gonna put him into. I don't think there's that many more going up into A tier, and I think he's slightly better than all these B tier players. So he's actually got a not bad mid-range shot. Offensively, he's a, he's around the same as Drummond, Thurmond, and Walton, to be honest. Um, however, he's an absolute beast on defense and rebounding. He's also quite fast as well. For that reason, he's going into A tier. David Robinson, no question about it, is an S tier center. David Robinson, you can it's between him, Duncan, and it's between realistically him and Duncan for who the best center in the game is. And D Rob, seven foot one. They gave him quick draw, so he's got an even better release. The funny thing is, is that David Robinson has actually got a better lateral quickness than Penny Hardaway Opal. Yep. He can switch on the guys in the perimeter. He can guard pretty much anybody. He is going to be the best center in my team realistically until at least March. There is no question about that. Him and Duncan are going to be the best centers in my team for a while. And that's why like, you'd be dumb to pick any token reward but David Robinson. Like, Grand Hill is not the best small forward right now. Penny Hardaway is not nearly the best point guard right now. David Robinson will be the best center for months. So, um, yeah, a really, really good card. Then we've got Wes Unseld. Unseld is... I'm going to put him down here in C tier. He's actually money. He's When he's wide open, he's money. But you know who else is money and has the exact same release? And is also three inches taller and just overall feels better? Mikan. Wes Unseld has got George Mikan's release. However, he is a six foot seven center who cannot fight at the power forward position. That is a big problem. That is a big, big problem. Next, we have got Patrick Ewing. So Patrick Ewing is going to go into A tier. Um, he's got decent height, can play well in the post, can shoot the three ball when he's wide open. He's a good defender, and as far as pink time token rewards go, he's definitely one of the better ones at M. And Pau Gasol, do I put him in B or C tier? I'm going to put him, I don't like this guy, I'm going to put him in C tier. Straight up, like, he actually can shoot the ball well enough, and a lot of people do shoot with him. I just don't like the card. I just find his release slow. I don't find his post game good. Don't find his defense good. So I'm going to put him in C tier. Not quite Dave Cowan's bad, but not great. Still got decent height though and can spread the floor if needed. Then we got Aaron Baines. Aaron Baines can spread the floor really well. Actually rebounds well. I'm going to put him in C tier though for the reason that he is literally the worst offensive post player I've ever seen. Like, he's sure he got goal back to the puncher. His post look and fade away are like 60. He cannot score in the post on anybody. His jump shot is money. He's, as a pick and pop post player, he's great. He's really good rebounding wise. A really good card, but so bad in the post that I can't put him higher than that. Bill Russell is just a much worse DeAndre Jordan. And if he's a, he's a, just a, he's a worse Willis Reed. He's a much worse Willis Reed. Carl Anthony Towns. You know what? Carl Anthony Towns going into A tier. Carl Anthony Towns can block shots. He can rebound. He can hit jumpers. He's moderately fast a really good card Nikola Vucevic is one that surprised me because this is the first year he's actually been passable on defense his defense is not bad in the slightest he can block shots again he can rebound except the difference is Vucevic is money he is money with that jump shot he's a better shooter than Carl Anthony Towns he's actually not that slow and rebounds really well Clint Capella is just not very good I'm gonna again put him in I'm gonna put him in D tier it doesn't do anything. Like, it doesn't really do anything. Sure, you can rebound a little bit, but like, so can all the centers. He's not fast. He can catch lobs, but again, so can nearly all of these guys. Um, and he brings nothing on offense. Like, absolutely nothing. He's not even great in the post. So, yeah, D tier for him. Um, Al Horford, I'm going to put him into C tier. 
So Al Horford, if he had a better release, would be a good card. He's actually really good in defense, shoots the ball really well. His release is beyond broken. And like not even just broken, beyond broken. One of the most broken releases in the game. Like worse than Trey Young without quick draw. It is terrible. Um, sure, I'm guessing if they give him quick draw later on in the year, because it is an easy enough one to time when he's wide, wide open, but it'll be contested every time. I think if he does get a quick draw card later in the year, it could be good, but this version of Al Horford is nothing special. Then we have got Joakim Noah. A lot of people like this card. I haven't used him for Evoed Up, but I'm going to put him into C tier because well, he's actually like, he rebounds well and he's good in defense. And he also shoots, he doesn't even, he shoot, well, he shoots mid-range a little bit better than some of these guys. Actually, I think Yo or no, is an Evo card. I, I'm almost certain he is anyway. Um, Dwight Howard, I'm gonna put him in B tier because when he's fully Evoed up, he's actually not a bad card at all. He's, um, gosh, really good post game. He's gonna be fast. He blocks shots really well, rebounds fantastically. So he's gonna be up there. He's just a better Andre Drummond when he would have Pink Diamond. Then we got Ryan Hollins, who I'm gonna put into C tier as well. He's fast enough. He's got decent height, decent post game. His mid range from what I've what I've used is okay. Can't shoot the three. But again, he's not the worst card in the world. Like not absolutely terrible. Then we've got LaFrance. He's money. From Sapphire, Ruby, Amethyst, they all feel the exact same. They are all money. LaFrance in A tier. Antonio Davis, undersized, doesn't do anything well at D tier. Hakeem Olajuwon, elite post game, all right defender, kind of slow, going into B tier, but not a bad option anyway. If you are someone who likes to cheese people in the post with his animations, he could be a great player to pick up. But again, that's not really my play style. Then we got Rick Smith, seven foot four beast is going into A tier. And I just realized that I've forgotten Mirasan, and I've also forgotten Sean Bradley. They both go. They both belong in A tier with Rick Smith as the Giants. They're all. It's all personal preference. Which of those three you prefer? I prefer Smith. Most people prefer Mirasan, and there's a few people that prefer Bradley. So there's no point putting all three in them in one after the other after the other. They're all where Rick Smith is. Then we have got Alonzo Mourning. He's terrible. See here. Just straight up. He can't really shoot. Release is broken. Undersized. Not very fast. Not a good rebounder. Isaiah Hartenstein is going into B tier. His release is money. If you like, his release is good. He's also got extendo arms. Like, remember Mo Bamba in 2K19? That's the way Isaiah Hartenstein is. His arms are so long. He feels like a Kristaps Porzingis type player where he's just so long. Problem is, he is that bit weak. Rebounds, okay. Like, he rebounds well enough, but if he's being bullied, he's being bullied. He blocks shots really well as well. But again, there is a problem he can't be bullied. That's the reason he's only in B tier. Like if he had strength of like 90, like they've done ridiculous things like giving Mirasan that strength, he would be probably up in A tier, maybe S tier, but he does get bullied quite easily. Bob McAdoo doesn't bring anything on offense, but is a solid defensive player. Well, it doesn't bring much on offense because I'm about to say this guy here doesn't bring anything on offense. It is Ben Wallace. Ben Wallace, only six foot nine. He is tiny for a center brings zero, maybe less than zero on offense, and defensively gets dunked on all the time, doesn't rebound well just because of his height. Then we got Artis Gilmore, who I'm going to put right up with Rick Smith. Artis Gilmore is seven foot two, plays good defense, can shoot the mid-range shot, and can kind of be a bit of a counter to the Giants because he can shoot that a little bit. Well, not really much of a counter to Rick Smith, but he can be a counter to um, Mirasan or Bradley anyway. And also, he's a guy who can defend kind of the quicker centers. Like, if you're on a Duncan or a Robinson, Gilmore can do a really good job defending them. Last up is Magic Johnson, who I'm going to put in C tier. Initially, like I was normally, I always put Magic Johnson in the middle because he's really hard to judge because he's a different type of center. But with the way the game's going now, he's going to get bullied inside by the actual, like, elite bigs. And he's not even much faster than the likes of Anthony Davis and Tim Duncan. So there's no real advantage to using him anymore because the center position is just getting better. And like, even if you're using him against some current centers, is he, he's not that much faster than, like he's not gonna be able to burn like the likes of Al Horford and stuff. So yeah, he's um, not great to be honest. So anyway, yeah, that is the video. This is the last tier list of the month. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe.